Hello, welcome to another GMT Driving School video. In this one, we're going to look at T junctions left and right. In this example, we're going to show the procedure at turn right. So we have our mirrors, middle and right mirror, right signal going in about 8 to 10 car length back, and then if available, if the space on the road to be safe, move over towards the right hand side of the lane. So we'll see that in action here. We've got the mirrors done, the signal goes in, slight move to the right, although not massively because it's a thin road. First gear goes in on the approach, so we're ready to pull away if there's any gaps, because there's a car coming from the left. Just put the handbrake on so we can set our feet for the pull away. As the car gets in front of you, drop the handbrake and that'll follow them out. That's the best way to manipulate medium to smaller gaps. Right, in this next example, slight difference. This one's a little bit uh, easier to see. Um, it's a more open junction, so we've got the same procedure. Middle right mirror, right signal. The cyclist comes around the corner there. They could have came in front of the car, so it's always worth going nice and slow to T-junction. So in this one, there's no stop, but that first gear was ready. And that's kind of why I wanted to look at those two examples together, because one of them was quite a blind junction, one of them was quite open. But the reason I've put these two shots together so you can see my work where everything seems to be quite synchronized. So the mirrors, the signal, the first gear choice and sitting forward looking into the new road. Uh, there are two different styles of junction but I've treated them the same, nice and slow with caution in mind. And this is the turn and left procedure. So we've got middle left mirror, left signal and staying in the center of the lane, depending on how wide it is. We do want to follow the contour of the junction around to the left. So again, just preparing the first gear. Uh, we can see cars are coming, so it's worth a stop, a handbrake and prep. The cars put its signal on and slowed down, so we just simply need to drop the handbrake to proceed. So if you have a little bit of a closer look at that, again, just at the car control issue. So we've got middle left mirror, left signal, Moving back into the centre of our lane. There goes first gear, starting to get prepared on the way in. So we are ready, if that was a clear road, I could have just gone, but the stop's there. Notice the black car, left signal, slows down, commits to the corner, and that's when I drop the handbrake, not before. All right, in this next example, we're gonna look at a, quite a common problem where if there's a parked car near a junction, Students often don't come back to the optimum position to turn left or right. So you'll see in this example here, we've got the silver car on the left. So we're gonna squeeze past him, make sure we've got good clearance, but also considering people could come out with quite quickly. And there we go, coming back into position so we can turn left or right. Just a bit of car control, but that's the best way to do it. In these next two examples, we're gonna look at the problem that we could have parked cars opposite the junction or in the direction we're going. So you'll see when we approach this T-junction here, we're gonna turn left. So reasonably easy, but straight ahead of you, there's a parked Mini and then a white car on the left. So not only do I have to give way to the normal side, the right side, but we're gonna to have to consider quite carefully if we can commit to the new road. And again, you often don't see learners taking that into a, um, Take that into consideration before they pull away, they put most of their efforts into looking right. In this example, it just has a little bit of additional difficulty with the severity of that corner. It's a 90 degree corner. So looking both ways, making sure when we commit to this centre space, we're actually able to do that. So we're going to look at, uh, it's, it's not rare, but it's it's more rare, turning right on a T-junction onto a one-way system. So you can see here that we're going to turn right onto a one-way system. And what commonly goes wrong, and I mean, I've made this mistake before, before I was an ADI, and that is to take the normal right turn position, which is the center of the lane, next to the white lane. But because all traffic must turn right, you would go over to the right-hand side of the road to turn right. All right, in these last two examples, we've got quite difficult scenarios. So this one is a very tight left-hand T-junction with buildings right to the corner and paths that intersect the road. So we're gonna have to go over a path here. Again, that's not uncommon um, where this was filmed, but 
it adds another layer of complexity where we would potentially have to give way to a pedestrian, a runner, a cyclist, and I've seen that before, cyclists shooting by now. So you've got to go in there super slow, deal with the path first, and then deal with a 90 degree T-junction with a parked car. So it's all about speed control, peeping and creeping, and leaning real forward and seeing what's coming down that road at you. So that one was quite a high level junction. So it's all about speed. And in this one, you've got two problems in one. So when we turn right at this T-junction, you've instantly got a set of traffic lights. So you've got to consider to yourself, is it safe to pull away on the road first and then have to stop for a pedestrian? A bit like what I did this morning with a client. There was someone waiting there. And it's reasonably difficult to do both things. So we'll deal with the T-junction first, make sure that's safe. Um, and also check the lights still green. So if you can go, you can go through both hazards. You could split them down. There is enough room just to turn out and then stop, but it's best to do them one at a time. So there we go. And remember your MSPSR procedure at all hazards, including the T-junction. And have a little watch through and a study of this video. And you can see the complexity and nature of difficulty changing over the video, starting off nice and easy. But notice our actions don't change too much. The speed is still very slow. The preparation for the pull away is still there. So keep trying, keep building, and we'll see you on the next one.